Hello everyone and welcome to the class of Petroleum Reservoir Engineering. This is second lecture of week 6. In fact, this is the last lecture of section 2 where we will be covering about oil and gas well testing methods that we continue from the previous lecture and predicting the reservoir performance. In the previous lecture, we discussed in detail about the gas well testing method. We started with the productivity index understood the concept of maximum flow production rate that can be achieved from a reservoir well that is also called the absolute open flow condition. Empirical methods based on the field data were also discussed in detail. In total we discussed about the pressure transient analysis and then the dilutivity analysis to understand the gas well performance. Similar discussion we will continue in today's lecture about the oil well performance followed by the decline curve analysis also called the production decline analysis in today's lecture. So, let us quickly compare the gas well with the oil well. So, in terms of the productivity index, the IPR equation for the pseudo steady state condition can be represented by this equation for the gas well. We derive this equation from the fundamental understanding, this equation also including the skin effect. So, productivity index is a parameter that characterizes the performance of a well that could be the gas well or the oil well, but it is applicable only when the flow is happening under the pseudo steady state condition and non Darcy factor is not included in the analysis. So, the gas well equation or IPR equation for the gas well can be adjusted in the form of productivity index that is defined as the flow rate divided by the pressure drawdown. So, the J is the symbol for that. This is the flow rate for the gas. We can write this Q capital because it is measured at STP condition or somewhere it is also mentioned at Q small. We can check the unit that is the productivity index. We can have this equation in the simplest form where everything that is appearing in the IPR equation other than the pressure drawdown is denoted by J. Okay. And we discuss about the condition when the maximum flow rate can be achieved that is AOF that is the condition when the pressure at the bottom hole or the sand face is 0. The unit of productivity index will depend on the form of the IPR equation we had chosen. For the gas well we are having the P approach, P square approach and MP approach. Accordingly the J unit will be adjusted. Similarly, for the maximum flow rate, this is a standard flow rate per day. Again, the time unit could vary uh, over to day to month. EOF is the absolute open flow potential of a reservoir. If we compare the similar thing for the oil well, for the oil well that is incompressible fluid or slightly incompressible fluid, we are having the equation for the incompressible fluid uh, assumption in this form that also be derived in the IPR section of our discussion. This also including the skin factor here 0.75 can be adjusted as a 0.472 that we also discuss. Now, this equation is having the similar analogy here only the numerical coefficient got changed and then the symbol for permeability it would be KO, viscosity will be mu O and the volume formation factor will be BO. So, all the properties related to the oil are mentioned in this IPR equation while in the gas well all the properties were related to the gas. Now, this equation can also be adjusted in the similar manner. We can keep this pressure here and remaining can go in the form of J that is the productivity index and then the ratio of flow rate divided by this pressure drawdown will be our productivity index of a well. Now, if we plot this pressure, reservoir pressure and the bottom hole pressure data with respect to flow rate Q, we are going to get slope that is minus 1 by j here. So, both the equations are explained in terms of P approach. Now, this equation can give us the productivity index j that is the characteristic of that particular well that could be the oil well or could be the gas well. Accordingly, we will be using the IPR equation. Knowing the value of this AOF that is the Q max, we can adjust the equation like this equation 1 
and this equation 2 in the form of single point equation we are just knowing the one condition of PWF we can calculate the flow rate or knowing the flow rate we can calculate what is the value of PWF at the bottom hole condition for the oil reservoir as well as gas reservoir. So, this is the way we can characterize oil and gas reservoir in terms of productivity index. This condition for the oil well is good when the pressure at the reservoir condition as well as the bottom hole condition is above the bubble point pressure. What do we mean by the above bubble point pressure? In that condition, the oil will remain in the oil phase. No gas is liberating out from the oil phase to the gaseous phase. Means we are having only the single phase that is the oil phase that is flowing in the reservoir under the radial condition. So, this equation is also for the radial condition only. Next concept that we discussed in the previous lecture about the well testing. So, we can see here the graph is showing when we are producing the well at a constant rate Q, this is the situation going to be for the pressure at the bottom hole. So, that is PWF. So, when we are not flowing, the well is in the certain condition, the reservoir pressure and the PWF both are equal. When we start producing, first we get the transient condition. In transient condition, what happens? The pressure changes with respect to time and that changes time as well as with the position. After the transient condition, we are having the late transient condition and followed by the late transient condition, we get the semi-steady state condition. That is the condition the well will be producing for a longer time. This pressure versus time data are very important for the transient analysis. In transient analysis, we use the IPR equation that has been derived considering the reservoir is flowing under the transient flow condition. We use the boundary condition as well as time dependent condition to characterize the reservoir performance. And then the final equation that we got for the gas well is like this, where the pressure PWF and PI are related to the gas properties that is mu g, bg and the reservoir properties like k and h. This is little complex equation where the time is also appearing because this is for the transient condition. In transient condition, we do the pressure build up or pressure drawdown kind of the test. It means near the valve region, we adjust the flow rate in such a manner that the pressure is varying with respect to time. That can be done when the well is flowing, we can shut in the well, the pressure build up will happen at the PWF condition or when the well is in certain condition, we start producing at a constant flow rate, we are going to get the pressure change near the or at the PWF condition. So, the transient flow tests are done at the constant flow rate. That is why it is mentioned here the constant flow rate. Now, in this equation, we can also estimate the time required to reach the pseudo steady state condition. It means this equation should be applied only when we are in the transient flow condition or before this time is reached because once we reach the pseudo steady state time, then the pseudo steady state equation should be used that we will discuss in the next slide. So, in this case, either the pressure drawdown or pressure build up test, we collect the data with respect to time, how the pressure is changing and that data can be utilized to have the relationship between PWF and the time. So, this equation is having the A, that A is actually including everything other than this term where we are having the M log T. So, M is actually represented by this part that is M. This M is going to multiply by log T. So, this term we are going to get and then the remaining everything is in the form of A. That also include the flow rate, reservoir properties and the fluid properties. Once we are having the near the valve well reason, when we are having the non Darcy effect also prominent, in that case we are going to get the quadratic equation and then the A will become the function of time because the equation is adjusted with respect to the flow rates Q and Q. Generally, this equation is used when we are having like different flow rate conditions and when we are utilizing non Darcy effect also into the equation. Now, if we compare the similar analysis 
or we set up the similar set of the equation for the transient flow condition for the oil well, the IPR equation for the oil well is going to be the similar analogous to this one. The only difference you can see here is the S prime for the gas well that include both skin plus non darcy coefficient. While here in the oil well, this is just S that is including the skin factor. The primary reason for having this difference is because the non darcy effect is more prominent in the gas well compared to the oil well. But in case of where we are having the non darcy effect prominent in the oil well also, we can also modify this S to S prime with the similar definition. In this case also of the oil well, under the transient flow condition, we are going to get the similar equation where the A is including everything other than the time dependent part and then the similar case of the transient analysis means collecting the pressure PWF data at different time can be utilized to establish the equation and once we are having the equation, for example, we are able to get the slope M when we are plotting pressure versus log T data then the M is having the properties of the gas as well as reservoir and any property that is unknown, for example, permeability was not known, we can calculate by knowing the value of M from here. Similarly, from the A equation, if any properties of the reservoir or the near the valve region, for example, RW the radius that is known to us, but if we want to calculate the value of page on thickness H, we can get with the help of this equation. It means either the oil well or the gas well after performing the pressure transient analysis that is done by disturbing the well and measuring the PWF with respect to time. Plotting the data pressure versus log T data, we will get two parameter A and M, both are relating the reservoir and the fluid properties. So, any properties can be calculated by using these two parameters. Again, the pressure transient analysis, the equation written here is only for the gas well, is only for the oil well. It means the pressure should be above the bubble point pressure. Next phase, when the transient is passed out, we are in the semi steady state case. We call this is the dilutivity test, or in that case, we are having the different form of the IPR equation. So, for the gas well, in the pressure form, I have written here, we can write in the form of P square as well as MP form. For the similarity purpose, comparing the pressure of the gas well to pressure of oil well, I had written this equation in the form of P. Accordingly, the approach is chosen, the parameter appearing here other than pressure will be adjusted. So, this QG that is the standard gas flow rate with respect to pressure is having all this term appearing here. Now, the difference this would also be QG. So, the difference is here compared to the previous case, we are considering the non darcy factor here, we are considering the skin factor and this equation is only for the pseudo steady state condition. It means the pressure at that condition is changing with respect to time at a constant rate. It means the stabilized flow rate is achieved. It means the QG value is at the stable condition. Now, we can perform how the pressure is changing and at a different flow rate. So, we can perform the dilutivity test, we can collect the data at different flow rate, at that different flow rate we can get the data for PWF. Minimum two data set are required because two unknowns are appearing here or we can get the more data set, fit the linear equation and then get the parameter A1 and B1 in this LIT method and C1 and N1 in the method of back pressure approach. Of course, we have to adjust this equation. This should be divided by QG. So, this will become linear equation. Similarly, we have to take the log form of this equation that we discussed in detail in the previous lecture. Similar to transient test, here also the parameter those we are able to estimate by performing the linear relationship are including the reservoir properties and then the non darcy coefficient as well as the skin effect. So, the parameter can be calculated if they are not known to us. In the form of back pressure equation, this C is actually equal to 1 by B and the N1 is including for the non-darcy coefficient. 
if non darcy factor is not there the value of n1 will be 1 if it is prominently then the value will be 0.5 in between the value will vary from 0.5 to 1 similar thing we can see for the gas well where the ipr equation for the gas well under the pseudo steady state condition will be appearing like this now this equation is having the skin effect non darcy effect is ignored that i said if it is there we can consider that part also if we are considering non darcy factor then this quadratic equation will become otherwise this term will not be there we will get this simply equation okay the back pressure equation this can also be put up like this and in that case the logarithmic of this equation log q o is equal to log c1 plus n1 log pressure difference will give us the linearity on the log log scale with respect to flow rate and pressure difference and then the slope and intercept will give us the value of the parameter those are appearing in that equation either a1 b1 or c1 and n1 those characterize the reservoir so this is the way the pseudo steady state and pressure transient analysis can be performed for the oil well also as we did for the gas well the emphasis again the equation written here is only for the single phase and then the oil reservoir will be having the single phase only when we are having the pressure above the bubble point pressure otherwise the two phase system may appear or the gas may evolve out or even the gas is not getting evolved out some of the properties those depend on the pressure they will be different than the properties those are above the bubble point pressure so what does it mean when we see the gas well performance we will see the difference appears in handling this ipr equation so there are several empirical methods are designed to generate the current and the future performance of the well like vogel's method that is based on the dimensionless form of the ipr equation begins method that's considered the bubble point pressure in the discussion standing methods they use the approach of the productivity index fatkovich method they consider the darcy flow and then the parameter those are pressure dependent are characterized by fp the clins clark method they modify the bogels method just using another exponent d to characterize the ipr equation in the equation of the oil well performance as i mentioned earlier if we are having the entire pressure range from above the bubble point pressure to below the bubble point pressure the factor fp that is appearing in the ipr equation when we derived this fp is actually having certain parameter as a combination of it so what parameter it is having kro that is the relative permeability of the oil so this ko that should be the effective permeability for oil can be related to this kro and the k so this kro mu zero is mu o and bo are the part of this fp function now this fp function will vary depending on the pressure condition so if the pressure condition is above the bubble point condition we are in reason one and then the reservoir is called the under saturated oil well reservoir in this case the fp form simply will say 1 upon mu 0 b 0 at p any particular pressure beyond the bubble point pressure will be constant and we will get the straight line for this fp because in this reason kro is going to be just one the effective permeability and absolute permeability will be the same and then the kro value will be one now what about the mu o and bo we discussed in detail when we were discussing about the oil properties how the volume formation factor changes with respect to pressure and how the viscosity of the oil changes when we are making the change in the pressure so the collective factor of all these three kro that is going to be the one in this region constant and then decline when we are having the pressure below the bubble point because now the gas evolved out there is a competition between the oil and gas to flow so considering all these three factor as a lumped parameter in fp we are going to get the constant value in the reason one but when we come to the reason two that is below the bubble point pressure in that case the fp is having 
evaluate the value of mu o and p o at the bubble point pressure means at this pressure and then the functionality of pressure is also appearing. So, what will happen when we are integrating this equation integral of this term will give us mu 0, v 0 and k r o also let us say that is equal to 1 and then the pressure part that is del p appearing here that will give me p r minus p w f. While in reason 2 this term will become like 1 by mu 0 b 0 k r 0 and then we are having this 1 by p v and integration of this p will give me p square. So, p r square minus p w f square divided by 2. So, this will be the form of the IPR equation. So, the measured difference in the oil well is as the pressure is changing, the system is going from a single phase to two phase system below the bubble point and then the IPR equation need to be adjusted accordingly. So, the Sadkovich method that is explained here based on the Darcy law simply for the pseudo steady state approach we are going to get this IPR equation that IPR equation can be solved for the reason 1 and reason 2 considering the lumped parameter that is FP that is accounting how the properties of the pseudo steady state condition changes with respect to pressure that could be the relative permeability, viscosity of the oil and then the boiling formation factor of the oil. So, that is the way the oil well performance equations are modified by different researcher considering different approach to account this part. There could be three conditions in the oil well performance equation when the P R and P W F both are above the bubble point pressure means the, the well is just operating in the reason one under saturated condition. In that case, whatever the IPR equation we develop for the oil well that is exactly applicable. But there could be the second condition where the PR and PWF both are below the bubble point case. In that case, this kind of the modified equation as for the Fatkovich method should be considered. And there could be the condition that is little bit more complex when the reservoir pressure is above the bubble point pressure and the PWF is below the bubble point pressure. So, the reservoir pressure the phase is in the oil phase, but when the fluid is traveling towards the production well and when it is reaching PWF, it, the pressure is below bubble point and then the two phase system is appearing. That is where the complexity in the oil well performance evaluation comes into picture. So, we are not going to discuss in detail, but these three conditions will be there in the oil well reservoir. There are certain other things that we can discuss about the performance of the reservoir. So far we consider only the single well that is also the vertical well. We did not discuss about the horizontal well and horizontal wells are kept away from the slavers of this course. So the vertical wells that we consider is in the reservoir field. In reservoir field there could be many certain situations. For example, there are many wells. And then the performance of one well is going to affect the performance of the other well because internally they are connected underneath the surface. So, the principle of superimposition is considered to handle such kind of the situation and then the other situation also those may arise. I uh, will discuss couple of them. The real reservoir system usually have several wells that are operating at varying flow rate. A more generalized approach is needed to study the fluid flow behavior during the unsteady state flow period. So, when the pressure is changing with respect to time at a location as well as time, then that is the condition of unsteady state flow condition. So, the principle of superimposition are applicable for the unsteady state or transient flow condition. So, what the superimposition principle theorem states that any sum of individual solution to diffusivity equation is also a solution to that equation. So, we can combine the effect of individual wells and then if we can or individual wells or individual factor and we can superimpose one effect on the other effect. That is for example, when we are having the multiple wells in the field. So, the performance of well 1 will also be affected by well 2 and well 3. 
they are at certain distance let us say r1 and r2. So, the pressure drop that is happening at well 1 that is equal to pressure drop happening due to well 1 that is the production is happening here. Similarly, the production is happening here pressure will decline here also that will also affect this one and similarly at the well 3. So, that is the principle of superimposition we can set up the equation for the transient flow condition combine their pressure drop into the big form of the equation and we can superimpose the one effect on the other. For example, here we had superimposed the pressure difference. Effect of rate change, there might be the situation where the well is performing, let us say a single well, a well that is performing at varying flow rate over the time. What does it mean? We are having this flow rate Q versus time let us say the well is performing for certain duration, then it change the flow rate, then it change the another flow rate, then it change the another flow rate. That could happen in the hours or days for example. Now, so far the method we discussed, we are having the constant flow rate for the pressure transient analysis, but now in this pressure transient analysis when we are performing, we are having the multiple flow rate. In that case also, the principle of superimposition can be imposed and that simply says every flow rate change in a well that will result in a pressure response which is independent of the pressure response caused by the previous rate changes. It means the pressure change in total for that particular well can be combined pressure drop happens in this first case, pressure drop happens in the second case pressure drop happens in the third case and so on. There could be multiple flow rate change and then the pressure change would be different. So, we can apply the principle of superimpose on the effect of rate change also. Similarly, the effect of the boundaries, there might be some fault. The reservoir is very heterogeneous. It is not having very clear cut boundaries. There could be very varying boundaries. Similar principle of superimposition can be implemented to account for the effect of the boundary the concept of imaging the boundaries can be applied for that purpose. The effect of pressure change, if the pressure change is happening in a particular well, the similar as uh, we did for the flow rate, we can do for the pressure change also. So, the principle of superimposition simply says superimpose one effect on the other effect, but this method is only applicable when the reservoir is flowing under the transient flow condition. Next topic of today's discussion is production decline analysis. So, this is the symmetric diagram for the conventional production system. We are producing the fluid that could be the oil and gas. So, what we measured from this well production profile, we predict cumulative production versus decline reservoir pressure. So, this is reservoir pressure PE, this is PWF. Over the time when we are producing the reservoir pressure will decline. And similarly, with respect to time, the production is also decline as the pressure energy responsible for the flow will decline. So, we can collect the two types of the data where we are having the cumulative production versus the pressure and then the time dependent production data. These data are very useful to characterize the reservoir or evaluating the future performance of the reservoir well. The material balance equation that we did for the volumetric valence and IPR equation that also did the similar thing and then the instantaneous GOR can also be used to calculate the performance of the oil and gas well reservoir. Now, more data set are generated that data set you are simply collecting the flow rate with respect to time and you are collecting the cumulative flow rate with respect to time and now you are having the data that is rate versus time data and you are having the rate versus cumulative production. Now, this could be the gas well or could be the oil well and we are denoting for the oil and G for the gas. P is saying the cumulative data. So, this data set will be utilized to understand the decline behavior of the reservoir. So, the production decline analysis is the analysis of past trend of declining production performance that is rate versus time and rate versus cumulative production plot for wells as well as reservoir. It means it can be performed for a just single well or it can be performed for a reservoir where multiple wells are present in the field area. 
there are two types of the approach are adopted for that purpose the classical curve fit approach of historical production data now the data collected for production versus time can be utilized to understand the performance of the reservoir or predicting the future in two approaches first one is classical curve fit of historical production data that method is given by arps in 1945 and then the second is type curve matching techniques that is proposed by agrawal in 1970 lot of modification has been done in 1970 model uh, proposed by agrawal at all actually this type curve matching technique is you are having the trend of the data that you are collecting from a particular well or the reservoir the data we are collecting is production rate versus time then we are accumulating the production rate also now we are having the several mathematical expression with respect to different functionality and now we fit the data for those already established mathematical expression that's called the type curve matching and we see which curve is matching with respect to the data collected from a particular well or the reservoir so the decline curve analysis technique is based on the assumption what assumption this decline curve analysis is consider past production trends and their contributing factor will continue in the future and therefore can be extrapolated and described by a mathematical expression it means the assumption has been made when we collecting the data in the past extrapolating those data for the future we are considering no external forces or the changes are happening within the reservoir domain reservoir is going to be the perform as the identical condition it is performed in the past similar way it is going to perform in the future in other sense we can explain the skin factor and then the damage near the well bore are not considered in this approach similar the identical system that was in the past is extrapolated for the future performance by the mathematical expression the factors those influence the decline curve analysis is the initial production rate or the rate at some particular time the curvature of the decline at what way the the decline is happening in the uh, production profile and then the rate of decline the decline in the production rate at what rate the decline is happening in the production rate so these are the factor to be considered when we are having the production decline analysis other important factor of the production decline analysis is the well is performing under the stabilized condition it means it is not fluctuating we are in the pseudo steady state kind of the situation where the stabilized flow rate is achieved this decline curve analysis is applicable for both oil and gas wells so the similar concept which we are going to discuss in the next slides will be applicable for both oil and gas wells we may consider one of the case so the production decline analysis that is also the rate time relationship rate is flow rate and time is the t the approach of production decline analysis is proposed by arps in 1945 and he proposed that the curvature in the production rate versus time that is q versus t data can be expressed mathematically by a member of hyperbolic family of equation so he considered the data of flow rate versus time and fit them for the hyperbolic family of equation those are exponential harmonic and hyperbolic curvature and he examined one of the condition the reservoir should be performing either in the exponential way the flow rate is declining or in the harmonic manner it is declining or hyperbolic manner it is declining so the flow rate is plotted versus time or versus cumulative production so we are having cumulative production also we can integrate the flow rate over the time that will give us the cumulative production and we can plot that on the cartesian coordinate system semi log plot and then the log log scale and can understand the nature of the curve and that nature of the curve is going to suggest us under what condition either it is oil well or the gas well is going to follow the curvature that could be the exponential harmonic and the hyperbolic so the select the flow rate decline model that is appropriate for describing the rate time relationship of the hydrocarbon system so we can choose the model that is matching with the production versus time data and then we can 
appropriately designated that particular well to be followed this kind of the curvature in the duct line. Conventional duct line analysis is based on the empirical relationship of production rate versus time given by this ARF 1945. What is that empirical correlation that says QT is equal to Q divided by 1 plus B multiplied by Di multiplied by T to the power 1 by B. So, this is the empirical formula that is relate actually the flow rate at any particular time T, initial flow rate of the fluid. Why I said fluid? Because this expression mentioned here is having the nomenclature that is given for the gas, but it is equally applicable for the oil also. So, in the case of the oil, the, the unit will be STB per day. So, QT is at any particular time, QI is the initial flow rate, T is in time, that is in days, it could be in months also, depending on accordingly the unit of other part will be adjusted. And DI is the initial decline rate, that unit will also depend on the time unit is chosen. So, the DI is having the unit of time inverse. And the factor that we are seeing here, B, that is actually the ARP decline curve exponent that is characterize the equation for different curvature or different form of the equation for the family of hyperbolic equations. Another factor that is also defined when we are having the data flow rate versus the time, we can characterize this in different form. As mentioned here, we can do in the Cartesian, semi-log, log-log scale. Another factor that is also utilized to understand the nature of the well performance is instantaneous or called the nominal decline rate denoted by D that is defined as the rate of change of the natural logarithmic of the production rate that is LNQ with respect to time. So, when we are having this LNQ with respect to time to keep the value of D positive, we put the negative sign here. And then when we do the differentiation of this, we are going to get minus 1 by Q dQ by dt. So, this is instantaneous decline rate with respect to the flow rate and time at a particular time that is also one of the parameter that is characterized the reservoir performance. We will discuss this in detail at the later slides. So, let us see this mathematical relationship can be applied equally for the gas and oil reservoir although the units are mentioned for the gas, but it can be applied for the oil wells also. So, the data that we collect with respect to time and then the flow rate can be utilized in different manners. So, the IPR equation that we consider can be utilized in a different manner. Similar way, this decline curve analysis can also be utilized in different manner. So, for example, this is our empirical correlation this empirical correlation can be applied for the individual well or for the entire reservoir domain. Now, in this equation, when we see the exponent b can have different value. So, for example, when this b is having the value of 0, we can take the limit of this term either with the initial value theorem or by the L hospital rule, we can convert this in the form of simplified form where b tends to 0 and that is equal to q2 is equal to qi exponential minus dit. It means the exponential decay in the flow rate is happening with respect to time. So, this is that situation when the exponential decay is happening and that is b is equal to 0. Second condition could be the harmonic flow condition. In that case, b is going to be 1 and when b is equal to 1, the simplified form of this equation will be like this just we can keep b is equal to 1, b is equal to 1. When the b value is between 0 to 1, the same formula will be applicable to understand the rate time relationship because now all these three equations are having the rate and time in the expression. Hyperbolic equation will give us this kind of the plot and when the harmonic equation, this should be the harmonic that will give me b is equal to 1. So, the flow rate versus time can be plotted and can see the trend of exponential hyperbolic and the harmonic form of that equation. Now, the second concept we had keep talking about is uh, the cumulative gas production. That cumulative gas production can be 
obtained for gas well similarly the cumulative oil production can be obtained for the oil well that is integrating this qt that is the flow rate at a particular time we can record at different different times and then we can integrate between the time of interest from t1 to t2 that will give me the np and gp now important aspect here these equations that we mention here for different cases are applicable only when the well or the reservoir is performing under pseudo steady state condition we also call this semi steady state or quasi steady state condition that is the boundary dominated flow conditions and these equations are not applicable for the transient flow conditions what are the other assumptions are taken to understand this form of the equation the well is draining a constant drainage area so means the boundaries are defined the well is producing at or near the capacity at what capacity this should be producing and then the production is happening at a constant bottom hole pressure pwf is also considered as constant when we are performing this production decline analysis now take the case of the gas reservoir i said equally applicable for the oil reservoir also what we can do we can integrate between the time of interest t1 to t2 of this flow rate that is measured at different time and we can get the gp form of the equation for the gas well np will be appearing for the oil well how we can get that we can place this expression under this integral sign and then integrate it with respect to time t1 to t2 if we take t1 is equal to 0 and t2 is equal to t the expression we are going to get for the exponential term that is gpt that is the cumulative production of the gas till time t from the initial condition and then the expression will simply take this form you can do that integration just keep this here qt so you are going to get integration 0 to t and then you are having qt is equal to qi exponential to the power minus dit dt qi is constant you can take out qi e to the power minus dit by minus di and you can put the limit 0 to t when you are doing this you will get this expression in this expression let's say qi when you are putting t e to the power minus dit divided by di and then you are going to get minus 0 when you put 0 then you will get qi by di now this is equivalent to qt again so by adjusting the equation you will get this form similarly you can integrate for the harmonic case where the qt equation will be replaced by this and then you can do the integration integration will give you the expression in this form and similarly for the hyperbolic little bit complex but you can do for that also where you can assume this term is equal to by so you will get the integral form let's say if i show it here integral form as qi by to the power 1 by b dt and then you can integrate it similar here when we are integrating this you will get uh, you can consider this as 0 to t qi upon 1 plus dit dt now you know how to integrate this equation you are going to get the ln form in this form so now we got the flow rate versus time data we could integrate them with respect to different form of the hyperbolic family or we are able to get the expression in the cumulative production also now why it is important to calculate the cumulative production because now we got additional component to analyze the data so let's say for example here when we are having this equation for the exponential term this qt and qi are having the exponential relationship if we take the logarithmic of both the sides ln qt is equal to ln qi minus dit so now if i plot this data flow rate versus time on the semi log plot qt on the log and t is on the normal scale i am going to get the straight line similarly for the case of the cumulative gas production that is here qt is equal to qi minus di gpt so if i am plotting the qt versus gpt 
on the Cartesian coordinate system, I am going to get the straight line. So, that is the way the curve can be characterized with respect to Cartesian semi log scale, log log scale as well as in the parameter form of flow rate versus time or flow rate versus the cumulative production. These production decline curve analysis method that we discuss for different cases having limitations and that limitations is the method completely ignore the flowing pressure data. So, in, in all these equations that we had seen here, we are not seeing any pressure data and that may produce lot of the error in the analysis. It may overestimate the situation or underestimate the situation. Hence, uh, these methods could be good to characterize the things, but they are ignoring the flowing pressure data and that should be considered taking the data uh, with this decline curve analysis compare with the IPR or the productivity index because those are considering the production profile also into the characterization of the reservoir. So, let us say the decline curve analysis as mentioned in the previous slide, we are having the rate versus time data, we can plot that rate versus time, we are having the rate versus cumulative data, those can also be plotted here and those can be plotted in the coordinate system where both the axes are having the normal scale. So, when we do rate versus time, I give the color coding also, blue color is showing for the exponential decline, red is for the hyperbolic and the black for the harmonic decline. So, we are going to get rate versus time data and all are declining in this manner. But when we plot rate versus cumulative data, the other two equation will still not be the straight line, but the first the exponential decline will give me the straight line. Now, straight line can be extrapolated to get the initial condition. Once I am having the initial flow rate condition QI, that will be at the condition when the production is equal to 0, cumulative production is 0. And in that case, so this is that situation here. In that case, we are able to get the QI and then I can get the DI also running the one condition and then utilizing the empirical correlation proposed by R. Now, similar analysis can be done on the log log scale where the same data are plotted on log log scale and we see none of the decline curves are giving us the straight line when we are plotting the rate versus time on the log scale. Similarly, rate versus cumulative flow rate is also not giving any straight line when we are plotting the log log data. On the semi log, we can see the curve 1 is giving us the straight line for the data when we are plotting the rate versus time. And on this rate versus cumulative production, we are having the straight line for the case 3, that is the harmonic decline curves. So, that is the way we are having the data. We can plot those in the coordinate, log log, semi log conditions with respect to rate and time or we can plot rate versus the cumulative rate and can see which kind of the curve is going to get fitted and we can see the decline nature of the production for a particular well or for a reservoir domain. So, for the exponential decline as mentioned here semi log scale that is here will give us the straight line and then the Cartesian will give the straight line when we are having the cumulative production. So, these two conditions are given the straight line. When we are having the hyperbolic decline, none of the curves. So, for the case of the hyperbolic decline for the red color, we are not having any relationship on any scale either Cartesian, semi log or the log. Uh, we, it is not resulting the straight line. For the harmonic decline on the semi log scale, we are having the straight line that is here. So, other curve will not give us the straight line, only the semi log, log versus cumulative production should give us the straight line. So, that is the way we can characterize our the data and can understand the nature of the production decline that is happening and then we can extrapolate this for the future time. So, another form of the decline curve analysis as discussed the instantaneous or the nominal decline curve that is we are having this expression where the flow rate is changing with respect to time. We can take the derivative of this and this empirical correlation can be fitted with two parameter B and D. Those are appearing in this expression. 
and we can see the exponential decline, harmonic and hyperbolic decline with respect to these data. This is the flow rate Q. So, in the case of exponential decline model, this D will be equal to 0 and we will get simple this relationship when this instantaneous decline rate is not changing with respect to flow rate. And when D is equal to 1, we are going to get the harmonic decline model and that is D is equal to 1 here. And when we are having the value of T between 0 to 1, this will be the hyperbolic decline model. In that case, in the exponential decline, this will be the straight line, harmonic decline, it will be the straight line with certain slope and hyperbolic will be having the deviation from the straight line and it will not be having the constant slope. So, this is the way also we can characterize the reservoir performance in terms of B and D, those are the empirical constant, those are appearing in this equation. So, in summary of uh, today's lecture, we discussed the similar analysis for the oil well performance in terms of productivity index, IPR equation, production decline curve analysis was discussed for this air empirical correlation and then the instantaneous uh, decline curve analysis approach. So, with this we could cover our section 2 that is listed here. So, these mathematical relationship mentioned here, those are empirical but can be applied equally for the oil and gas reservoir or individual well and also for the entire reservoir where the multiple wells are there. So, with this, the section 2 of our syllabus is completed. We discussed the volumetric balance, IPR equations, understood the performance of the oil and gas well reservoir under different conditions. And at the end, in today's lecture, we also discussed the production decline curve analysis. So, in the next lecture, we are going to enter in section 3, that is mostly on after the primary recovery, we will be discussing about the secondary and tertiary recovery methods, followed by a brief introduction about the reservoir simulation and then the unconventional natural gas production, specifically gas hydrate. Thank you very much for watching the video. We will meet in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.